Okay, so the uh, next section is called a library of functions. So the idea is to understand the general shape of about six or seven types of functions. So we're going to have linear, quadratic, cubic, uh, square root, reciprocal, and uh, absolute value. I think that's I think that's the main case. And then once we learn these, uh, what we're going to ultimately call parent functions, then we talk about shifting them and stretching them from their parent nature. So it's kind of like parent parent functions. So one of the uh, parent functions is a, is a linear function. And so all we have to do for these problems is you'll see it has the uh, x value, which is the argument in the function, and the y value, which is the is the function evaluated. And because it's a linear function, what we really, what this information here is giving us is two points. And the two points are going to be the x value, which in this case is negative 3, and the y value, which is negative 8. And the second point is going to be x equals 1, and the y value is 2. And so we have two points, and we just did that second section linear equation and two variables. So uh, all we have to do is do what we did before. We calculate the slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Again, I'm going to label these. It doesn't matter which one's which. Just make sure you use the same subscript. So got y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. The tricky thing here is you got to remember that when you take the inverse or the added inverse of a negative number, it becomes positive. Same in the bottom. And I got ahead of myself there. So the additive inverse of negative 3 is positive 3. So we're going to add positive 3. And then um, get 10 over 4, which can be simplified to 5 over 2, 5 halves. OK, so that's the slope, point slope form of the linear equation. So you get y minus y1, which is negative 8. Slope is 5 halves times x minus x1, which is negative 3. So you get y plus 8 equals 5 halves times x plus 3. So we take the additive inverse of negative 8, additive inverse of negative 3. Uh, we multiply out the right hand side. 5 halves x plus, OK, so we're going to leave this as a fraction. So you multiply the numerators together and the denominators, you know, the denominators 1. So you get 15 halves. And then finally, we're going to subtract 8 from both sides. So you get y is equal to 5 halves x plus 15 halves minus 8. But negative 8 in terms of halves is going to be, well, we need the denominator of 2. So you're going to multiply the numerator by 2. And again, I got ahead of myself there, thinking one step ahead. OK, so that's negative 16 halves. So now that you found a common denominator, you get that 15 minus 16 is 1. And that is the linear function indicated by the given information. OK, problem number 2. So we have two points, negative 10 and 12. and 16 and negative 1. 
again, because it's a linear function, we're able to just use the procedure we learned before. We just wrote the equation down, so I'm not going to do it again. Okay, so y2 minus y1 x2 minus x1. So we're going to have negative 1 minus 12, which is going to be negative 13. Here we have 6 plus 10, 26. And you can see I can simplify that. So always look to see whether you can simplify it. And because 16 times 2 is 26, you can reduce that down to a negative half, which is good because it looked a little scary at first. And then we use the point slope form linear equation. So you get y minus y1 is equal to slope times x minus x1. So we get 12, y minus 12 is equal to negative 1 half times x plus 10. Multiply out the right hand side. So negative 1 half times 10 is negative 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. Negative times positive is negative. Okay, then we're going to add 12. So that's y equals negative 1 half x plus 7. There's your answer. Um, one of the way you can think about this is instead of adding 12 to both sides, what you could do is you can move this to the other side. So this one disappears when you move it. But when you move it from one side to the other, you change the sign. So negative 12 on this side is equivalent to positive 12. And then you could have negative 5 plus 12, 7. Just a different way of looking at the problem. OK, now what I'm going to do here, you, you're given a graph of the different types of functions, and then you're figuring out how the function is transformed. So if I were to draw this, the parent function would be something like this. And you know, none of these functions are stretched, so that's that's convenient. So that's the parent function. And you can see that the kind of the identifying part of this um, absolute value is that this sharp part where it goes from positive to negative slope is shifted. And it's shifted negative 2 in the x direction and negative 1 in the y direction. So um, I think what they're looking for is just the shift. They're not asking for the equation, but we'll, we'll talk about the equation. We'll really talk more about it in the next section, but we'll say shift x negative 2 units, shift y negative 1 unit, okay? Negative 2, negative 1. Uh, the actual function would look something like this. It would be, be the absolute value of x. And because we're shifting in the x direction, negative 2 units, we would add 2 here. And then the y direction would be negative 1 unit. So it's always because it's x minus h. So if h, in this case, is negative 2, you have negative 2 times a negative sign, which gives you positive. So really, kind of what we're doing is x minus negative 2. But when you simplify that, it becomes positive 2. It's kind of another way of looking at it. OK, the next function is a square root function. And the square root function, so the, the parent function, is the square root of x. And that starts at 0. And then the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 4 is 2. And that usually gives you enough points to, to draw a reasonable square root function. So what you see is kind of the identifying part here is the beginning. Where does this function begin? 
and relative to the origin, which the parent function is relative to is, is zero. If you stick x equals zero, you get y equals zero. You can see it's negative two, positive one. So what we could say is the shift, the x shift is negative two, and the y shift is plus one. And from a equation standpoint, you would have the square root of x plus two, and then put a plus one outside the square roots. So again, it's x minus h. So you can maybe initially think of it as x minus the amount of shift, which is negative two. And then the additional part is the y shift. So if you have a negative times a negative, you get the square root of x plus two plus one. Okay, this is a cubic function. So the cubic function looks like that. And the um, you know the key points on a cubic function are the zero zero, and you have one one. You actually would have two eight, which goes off the scale here. So this is, this is uh, five eight would go up there. So you can kind of see the shape of it right there. So that's your parent function. And then we look at how how much the again the identifying point is this zero zero point where it shifts from curving one direction to curving the other. You can see I go down this way and I go over that way. So if you look at how that point has shifted, I could say the x shift is minus two and the oh sorry is plus one. So we go x direction plus one and the y shift is minus two. So our function is gonna look like this. It's gonna be x minus plus one cubed minus two. So this is sh shifts plus one, so it's x minus plus one. So we can simplify that just down to x minus one cubed minus two and that would be the transform function. Okay, this is a reciprocal function, and these always have these asymptotes, so that's how they're different than all the other ones. They also, instead of going to infinity as you go to positive and negative infinity and the x, x the y value, uh, these go to some asymptote. So the, the um, function looks something like the, the parent function is you know, the parent function is the reciprocal function, which is 1 over x. So when you have x equals 0, it's undefined. Uh, when x equals 1, you get 1. So you get 1 comma 1. If you go to 2, you get the reciprocal of 2, which is a half, a third, 3, you get a third. And the same way here, if you go to a, high, a half, you get 2. If you go to a third, you get 3. So that's kind of the general shape. Usually if you just put one point there, you can pretty get a pretty good. And again, the, the kind of the point of symmetry is around the origin. And that's where these axes cross. So if you look at, and you also notice that the parent function approaches zero and approaches zero. So the best thing to do here would be to draw a horizontal line like here so you can see how the transform function approaches this new value and then um, you can look at it here it actually in the vertical direction it doesn't shift it's still symmetric around um, x equals zero so again we look at how far it shifts from here to here and the only shift we have is in the y direction, in this case, x axis shift is zero, y axis shift is minus two. So our transform function is gonna be f of x equals one over x minus zero, 
minus 2. And we can get rid of that 0. It's not superfluous. So that is the parent function in blue and the, the transform function in red. OK, this is a quadratic function. So the quadratic function is parent function looks like that. And so the key points are 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 2, 4. And then you have the symmetry around the y-axis. So that's what, that, that's what the parent function looks like. So what you see is that the vertex, which is this point, is shifted negative 2 plus 1. So that's that's where so you, all you worry about in coming up with the initial part is shifting the showing the shifting of the vertex. So the sh the vertex is going to be plus one in the y. So I need to write those down. So we have um, x shift. So it goes, again, this vertex is the origin. So this new kind of origin is 1, 2 units in the negative direction. So it's negative 2. And the y shift is positive 1. But we also have a reflection here, which turns it upside down. And the reflection is going to be across the x-axis, because this one's pointing up. This one's pointing down. OK, so when you come up with the actual equation, you treat the uh, shifts as normal. We're going to take the ref reflection by putting a negative sign out here. So what you'd have is um, you have a y-shift plus 1 you have an x shift of negative 2. It's squared because that's the parent function. And you put a negative sign out in front just to represent the reflection. So if we clean this up, it's going to be negative x plus 2 squared plus 1, where this negative applies to just this term. OK, the next one is a square root function again. So the parent function is the square root of x. Why is that? Well, because it's just a single curve, so it's not going to be any of these quadratics or cubics. Uh, it doesn't have any asymptotes. So it's not going to be a reciprocal function. So we kind of eliminate. It's not a linear function. And you can see the point where it starts, you got to shift down to and to the left to. So just the shifting of the initiation of the square root function tells you that it's going to be minus 2 in the x and minus, minus 2 in the x and minus 2 in the y. So to reflect that, we put x minus a negative 2. That's the x-axis shift. And then the y-axis shift. But we've got one additional thing, is the parent function. Remember, it's 0, 0, 1, 1, uh, 4, 2. The square root of 2 is 4. 4 is 2. So that's your parent function. you notice it's flipped. And it's flipped that way, because it's still pointing this direction so that it, it gets larger in magnitude, more negative in this case, as time goes on, or as, as you increase x. This one is um, just flipped over. So it's a x-axis reflection. So again, I should write out what they are before I start reflecting them. And the so just in terms of words, we have an x-axis shift of negative two, a y-axis shift of negative two, and we have another x-axis. x-axis reflection, which means we put a negative sign out in front of that. 
So if you take a negative times a negative, clean that up inside, you get negative the square root of x plus 2 minus 2. Okay, so that's the first eight problems. Now we're going to plot these uh, piecewise functions. So the question is, how do we do that? And uh, there's a couple of ways we can think about it. Let me add a piece of graph paper. And we'll uh, say this is our x-axis, so y-axis, negative 10, positive 10. So we're just going to do a nice square looking graph. Here's my origin. And what this says is for x less than negative 4, we're going to use this function. And for x greater than negative 4, we're going to use this function. So the best thing to do is probably is to draw these two and then we can erase the parts that don't apply to these this particular domain. So we can use um, point slope or um, slope intercept form. So the way we would do this is uh, here. So this first one, the y intercept is 0, 0,6, because that's that number. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5, 6. Okay, so that's the first point. That's one point. And then uh, it has a slope of 1. So we can go up, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1. I'm just going to do this till I get here. And you do the same thing in the other direction. As long as you go far enough so you can get two points. So there's another point. And you know, you're going to be putting these on a piece of graph paper. But I can draw a line from here to there through the middle point, And you can see how it kind of goes from one corner of a cell to the next. So that is this. And that applies for less than negative 4. And then this one, the second part, the y-intercept is... 0 comma negative 4. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4. That's, that's one point. And the slope is a half, so that means we have less rise than run. So you go up 1, over 1, up 1, over 1, up 1, over, well, sorry, up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2, up 1, over 2. So I got that point right there. So that's probably long enough. And so we're going to like that. Now, I'm going to draw a vertical line just as a kind of a guide right now. So let's use, I'll still use red because I, so at negative four, something happens. One, two, three, four. So if I draw a vertical line there that tells me where the transition occurs so what I'm going to do is uh, what you could do is you could if you did it in pencil you could erase that part I'm going to pull that down to here and I'm going to pull this one up to there and then I'm going to delete that guide thing and you can see when uh, x equals negative 4 here you got um, negative 4 plus 6 which is 2 that's that thing. And when you put negative 4 in here, you have 1 half times negative 4, which is negative 2 minus 4. It's negative 6. That's that point. So it, this is not a continuous um, relationship because it jumps as you go from one to the other. The other key thing you got to do is you got to reflect this, this thing, this equality. So what you would do is you'd put a little red dot right there, and you would put a little hollow dot here. And what that indicates is that the function at x equals negative 4 is equal to the red dot, but not equal to the white dot. And then when you come over here, it starts on this curve.
Okay, the next one's a little more difficult because you got squares and square roots and stuff like that. Uh, the change occurs at x equals 2. <clears throat> so what we can do is we can plot these. And this quadratic function, so this is a little tricky. So um, we're going to draw it, and then we're going to kind of black out. I can't erase it, but you can. So we've got a quadratic function, which the parent function goes from here, from the origin. So what this one is, is it's going to shift one unit in the y direction. This is a negative. So the shift is one unit positive. So that goes to here. So that's the vertex. But instead of pointing upward, it points downward. And we're going to do everything relative to that point. So we're going to, instead of going over one, up one, we're going to go over one, down one over one, down one, over two, down four, one, two, three, four. So that's why it's important to kind of count things. Over two, down four, one, two, three, four. And you, you'll notice the symmetry. There's also, you go over three, one, two, three, down nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then the symmetric point is over here. So that's, that's your, that's your function. And I'm, sketching in by hand, so I guess I could erase it. Okay. And you see the transition occurs here at 2. So some, this is true for x less than 2. So theoretically, I could go in here and just erase all that stuff. Because that's greater than 2. Okay, now the next function is the square root function. And it's it shifted 2 units in the x direction. So our, our parent function looks something like this. So you've got 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. But what we're going to do is we're going to shift it two units, and it's going to be x minus h. So our shift is positive two units. So the, the new starting point for the square root function is here instead of here. So relative to this new starting point, we go over 1, up 1, over 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, up 2, like that. And the other one's going to be off scale. So this square root function is going to look like, kind of like that. So the total function goes here and again in this case it doesn't really matter because they have they do have the same value at this point it, as you shift from one shape to another I think that's the last one right there so the next one has has um, three parts uh, but they're not super crazy. Well, actually, they're not too they're not too great, are they? For one thing, let's just uh, let me just add a page here. I just want to see if the function values are the same at this intermediate point. So, if I do say at x equal negative one, which is this thing here. You got 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which is negative 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. And then you do it in the second function. So you have 2 times negative 1 squared minus 1. So you get 2, negative 1 squared is 1. So you get 2 minus 1, which is positive 1. So it's not going to be smooth. You can do the same thing at x equals 1. So you get 2 times 1 squared minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, which is 1. And then you can use it at the end here. So you get 1 minus 1 squared, which is 0. So again, it jumps between those points. Okay, let's do the linear function first. So it's going to have uh, intercept of plus y intercept of plus one, and 
and it's going to have a slope of 2. I'm going to go this direction, okay, because this only applies to, oh, actually, that's for x greater than negative 1. Okay, so, sorry, went, let's go the other way. So, uh, there you go. So, so that starts at x equals negative 1. So I've got to shift this down. It has a y-intercept. So it has a y-intercept of plus 1. Slope of 2. Down. So we go down and down, down and back, or up to the right. Okay, so that's this part. Uh, I did that wrong. Let's go back. It goes this way. So actually goes right there. So if I extend this off, it'll come to um, Okay, let me do this over again. X-intercept of 1 y-intercept of 1. So we go down, we start here, put a, put a point, and you'd go down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1. Okay, so let's put this thing out. It's going to go like that. But this is only good for x less than negative 1, so what we can do is we can take this function and we can squish it down like that. Okay, so that's the linear part. Now, between negative 1 and positive 1, it's going to be a quadratic function. Um, let's see what's going to happen with that thing. So you've got 2 times x minus 0 squared minus 1. So um, this, the parent function in this case is not a normal x squared. It's 2x squared. So what will happen is it sits here. You go over 1. Instead of up 1, you go over, up 2. You go over 2, instead of going up 4, you go up 8. And you can go on the other side. So you go over 2, like that. Over 1, up 2, over 2, up 8. So that's what the function is going to look like. And it's going to be shifted negative 1 in the x direction. So what we could do is you could shift all these little points one unit in the egg in the y direction. And now between negative one and positive one, you have that. Okay, let's get rid of those extra points that we don't need anymore. Okay. Then the last one is one minus x squared. So this one You've got negative x squared plus 1. That's the same thing. That's negative x minus 0 squared plus 1. So this is your standard quadratic function. It's been shifted in the y direction by one unit. So let's put those in there. So we're going to put the origin or the vertex here at plus 1. Instead of going up, it's going to go down. And there's no multiplying factor. So we go down 1, over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1, uh, over 2, down 4. So we go over 2 relative to this vertex, over 2, down 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 2, down 4. So you get that. And so if we were to draw that function, it would look something like this. Like that. So the part 
that we would be interested in would be this part. So we get rid of this extra stuff in here. Get rid of the blue part. It's kind of a weird looking curve. Get a little blue dot out of there. So it's linear up to here. Then it looks like this for the middle part. And then this part is not linear. It's going to kind of curve down like that. So that one's difficult. Um, I just wanted to give you a challenging one.